So let me put this off somewhere. So our demo today is holding stuff on your lathe. Um, basically, um, if you, you can put something in your lathe and secure it, you can turn anything that you can actually put on there and have it safe and secure. So we're gonna start with the most simple ways. Um, if anyone has any questions or anything or comments, please chime in. I'll try to leave spaces so you can come in. But the first are basically the um, drive centers. So the, these all come with your, with your lays. Everyone's seen those. And the live center on the tailstock, which spins. So basically, mostly for spindle turning, though um, a lot of people start bowls between centers so they can balance the grain out how they want it. Um, and, see, and these uh, usually come with every lathe you buy, though usually the um, live center you get is pretty cheap. This is a Nova Live Center, which I got, which takes, it takes these extra, um, you know, the nose pops out, and it takes different inserts to, um, to do different things. So I think this was around, I think it's in the ballpark of $100 from, from Technotool. That's a real nice, that's a three bearing live center. So it, um, you know, it stays pretty good. Good, it's uh, stable, doesn't wobble. So, and the other one I have, which came with, uh, this is a one way actually, a one way live center. Um, same idea, it's, it's three bearings inside. The actual, that tip actually um, pops out and you can put, um, they have a pen turning, a, a pen, they call it a pen turning tip, which you can put in. Um, you also have a big comb which threads on there for um, when you want a 60 degree live center. And they also have this big cone thing. So when you're trying to center up, you either put it like that if you're trying to center up stuff like a, a pepper mill or oh, cool. a vase or something, or you put it this way and have something, you know, centered up that way to keep it nice and straight when you go. So um, so upgrading from your typical, I don't even have my regular um, live center anymore that I started with. That came with the lays. I don't. I don't even know where they are. So these work so much nicer. They're smoother. They're they've been well. They're concentric. They don't. Um, so it's a little bit of money, but um, to me, it's well worth the upgrade. And then you also have uh, these are a couple. Um, these get clamped in your chuck. So you can have your hmm. chuck on there for something and um, and you just put these into the standard jaws or any jaws that aren't too deep. And then they can, you can start your bowls with these or whatever you're using your spindle, uh, you know, cut your tenon and then you can put, you know, take these out and put your, whatever you turn the tenon on back into the chuck. So they're, they're nice. You don't take your chuck on and off. If you're doing a lot of different things in, you know, making multiples of stuff. Um, then we have, let's see, where am I going to go next? Ah, yes. I mentioned that you can center things on, um, on a lathe. Hey, let's go on a visit. <laughs> My shop oh, cat. Oh, oh. <laughs> She's not housebroken, so she lives up here. <laughs> but um, I mentioned that you can start bowls between centers to balance your grain. And this thing, the scary looking thing, goes right into your chuck jaws. 
to center it up there. And it's deep enough you can actually use your deeper jaws. Like, um, you know, if you want to use these, it's deep enough to you can actually use your heavy duty jaws if you're doing a big bowl. And, uh, and this really grabs into the log. So this is nice. Nice way we have a big bowl, you can really um, dig into it and it's not going to move around. Where'd you find that, Tom? That I got from Woodcraft. I had to order it. But it's made by one way. Okay. So it's a yeah. big bite. Okay. Thanks. Then, because we're going to talk about, we saw a lot of these things before, but, um, but for pen turning, And we are typical, uh, you have your, your mandrel, which you get is a Morse taper number two. Um, then you put your bushings and your pen blanks on the mandrel. Um, then I like this thing, which is um, a mandrel saver, it's called. And it actually compresses the bearings in your blank. Um, so usually you have a, a brass nut up here that you put on, and you bring your you bring your 60 degree live center up and um, catch it that way. But that has a tendency to bend the mandrel. So this um, compresses it just right on the bushings and the blanks. You're not putting any pressure on the mandrel itself. So it keeps the mandrel from bending. And also shortens the mandrel up so you don't get as much um, vibration. So that's a nice upgrade. Um, Mandrel savers don't cost very much. This was from Craft Supplies, I think. Um, Penn State has one, which I don't think is quite as nice, but um, I guess John had some bad luck with that one too. But, uh, but yeah, this one from Craft Supplies seems to work really well. Then, uh, the next thing, with pen turning is you can get rid of the mandrel completely and actually turn between centers. You just glue up your blank and you have, you put the, actually this in your, in your drive center. It's actually a, a tail, a, a dead center for a tail stock that you can put in your head stock and you put the blank between this and your six degree live center. And, um, and then you can turn it and just use calipers when you get down to the right size. There's also an option, people make special bearings which have a 60 degree um, chamfer on them. So they'll fit right on the 60 degree centers. Um, the nice thing about those, those bushings, I think I said bearings, but I meant bushings, is they're um, very finely made. They, uh, you know, they're made on a CNC machine by somebody and he's does, doing small batches, so they're made in the, most of them are made in the USA, and um, so they're very high tolerance. So even if you don't use them for turning between centers, they're, they're good to get for just if you want to use them. Uh, some of them have through holes, you use them on a mandrel also. So it does work very well. Then if you want to use your standard bushings, but get the turn between center, um, benefits, you can use this thing with, this is your live center in the tail stock, and this is your drive center in the head stock, and you just put your standard bushings, one there, one there, the blank between them, and then um, it works really well, I think it's nice and short, so you don't have any vibration, and then nicely if you're doing a lot of pens, or you want to take remove the blankets really quick. You just you know back your tail stock off, comes right off. You can do whatever you need to do and put it right back on. And Where'd you find that one at, Tom? This is from Arizona Silhouette, Whoa. which actually is in Pit, um, Pennsylvania. But um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it's actually I think PSI sells it also. Um, Does it work good? I think it works great. That's what I usually use if it's a if I'm doing a one barrel pen, this is what I use. 
So I just like uh, the fact that they uh, try between centers. I tried on the white side mandrel, and I mean, they, they both work okay. But yeah, kind of like everything works okay. I mean, that's that's instant alignment. That's a good idea. Yeah, and I really like the fact that, I, that it's easy to take the blank off. Yeah. Really, I can take one blank off, put the next one on. Because yeah. um, a lot of times what I do is I'll, I'll turn a bunch of them, and then I'll go back and finish them all, and um, you know do a little bit of a production line. And this makes it easy to switch between the blanks. That's what I really like about it. So then what I have for where to go. I lost my uh, bottle stuff. Hmm. Oh, there it is. So these are bottle stopper mandrels. Uh, this is Ruth Niles. So I don't know if you ever used, she sells the stainless steel bottle stoppers, which are really nice. Um, so, I mean, that's where I usually get mine. But this is a number two Morse taper, and you need a draw bar on it. So if anyone's never seen a draw bar, it's basically a piece of threaded rod. What you do is you put this in the headstock, and the draw bar goes in the back of the headstock and basically holds this in. So this will tighten up against your back of your headstock to hold everything in so it doesn't blind out at you. So... But if you don't, if you haven't used um, a draw bar, um, they're they're good for any time you have something in the headstock, like a, a Jacob's chuck or anything like that. That um, you definitely need to hold it in so it doesn't come flying out at you. And this is Penn State's version of the bottle stopper mandrel, and it's a screw on for one inch eight, um, and works okay. But uh, so, but uh, it depends what length I'm on, which one I use. So, okay, so that's my that's my arsenal of um, that's my arsenal of, of between centers type stuff. Um, I don't have any questions or comments. Okay, so the next thing I have is um, we're going to sort of jump around a little bit. But the next thing that probably came with your lathe, any lathe you buy, are face plates. So um, these look brand new because I have never used them. Uh, I think John uses face plates a lot. Um, but I typically just use my my chuck. So, um, but what what you basically do is you take your wood piece you're working on, and I actually had one here. There it is. And you just you can screw right into the piece to mount it on the lathe. Um, you can do, do, do it on a bowl blank, but you probably want to do it you know, on, the, on the part that's getting hollowed out so you don't have any screw holes in it. Um, if you need to do the whole thing, your whole bowl on, the, on a face plate, you probably want to use a, a glue block or something on the, between the bowl and the, um, and put a sacrificial piece on here so that you don't have the screws going into, the, into your bowl. So otherwise, you have to cut out the screw holes or hide them somehow. So, John, do you have any faceplate comments? Yeah, um, I'll show you what I got. Let me focus you. OK, you're on video. I'm on the big screen, huh? All right. Mm 
Hey, John, now we can really see that dust in his shop, huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, man. It's, you know, I'll, I'll clean it tomorrow. Um, okay, here's an example of a glue block on there. I'll just screw it on. And you can use this as many times as you're careful. Um, typically, I start off with about inch and a half, two inch, like this. And I can glue this up 10 to 15 times before I have to change it. When you're done, you just take a flat scraper and dress this edge, put it on your belt sander, make sure it's flat and you're ready to go again. Different sizes I have. Thanks. That's all I, I got. see a screw chuck there? And a screw chuck. Yeah, why don't you talk about that because that's where I'm going next. I don't, okay. I don't have one. Excellent. Okay. Before, before you go to that, John, before you go to that, can you talk about the types of screws you should use and shouldn't use? Ah, good choice. Good point. Good point. Good point. Um, I use number 12 sheet metal screws, uh, coarse thread, and they're an inch and a quarter long. I got about an inch, a little about three eighths on these bigger ones here. I think the little ones a quarter inch. So you get a good penetration. And put every screw in. If it's got six holes, use six. Except for these small ones, it's got eight. I don't know why. This little <laughs> teeny uh, aluminum thing from, I think it's Easy Wood Tool, has eight. But um, just be smart. You know, if you got a big piece of wood, the more screws, the better. But this is the most secure way to mount the ball. If you're doing big stuff, this is the way to go. You so John, I'll paint your line. Should you use, should you use uh, uh, drywall screws? No, not at all. Let me show you the screws I use. Uh, no mistakes. Where's the camera? There it is. Back up. Back it up just an inch. There you go. <laughs> Can see it? Yeah. Philip said, inch and a quarter, coarse thread, number 12, stainless steel. Yeah, don't, don't use drywall because they, they're too brittle. No, and they, they will yeah. Stainless steel will bend before it breaks. You want that. That's important. Yep, and always drill pilot holes for your screws. Especially if you're going right yeah, into your bowl. Yeah. yeah, what I do is uh, yeah. so I have a VIX bit on the end of my drill here. So you put that down into the hole of the faceplate and it aligns the hole dead center. I'll do the first one, put a screw in, tighten it up and then go through, drill all the other five or however many there are, and then uh, put the screws in. But you do the first one, it holds everything in place, and then you get perfect alignment on all six screws. Works very well. It's called a VIX bit. Nice. Never thought I'd use mine there. I have one for pegging doors, but uh, that's a good use for it. How about when, John, when you glue your um, waster piece to your bowl, what's the best glue to use? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I use super glue. Yeah. Um, the medium density one, because it is gap filling. And even though I try and make them pretty flat, you know, the face plates, um, it may be a little bit off, so it'll fill any gap. You can use epoxy, you can use wood glue if you want to wait overnight. Wood glue is, you know, type on two or something like that. It's strong enough. It's probably stronger than super glue, but super glue doesn't have much shear strength. It has a lot of pull strength, but not much shear strength. So if you're, if you tend to get catches a lot, super glue may not be your best glue. But it's quick and simple, and that's why I like to use it. Okay. For small stuff, um, I use hot melt glue. Like for lamp blanks, it worked really well. And again, it's quick and it's easy to clean off. So nice. it depends on what you're turning. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Can you show that screw chuck now? Yeah, so it's got, um, I don't think about three eighths. And all you do is drill a hole in the bottom of your blank, screw this guy in until it seats on this rim over here. You want your blank to be kind of flat, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty flat. The more contact you have, the better it's going to hold. And it works pretty well. It's great for starting small to medium sized balls. It's a great way to start them. Good. And this one is a uh, quarter eight. I'm sure they come in different sizes. It's a heavy duty. I think this one's an old blazer. Uh, I've had this thing forever. <laughs> it works good. Great. Thank you. And I just wanted to point out, I also have uh, one of these, which is, oh, hold on, I need to put my phone in here. Just told me I'm running down on battery. Okay. So this is um, basically a screw chuck, but it mounts in your four jaw chuck. Uh, but it does the same thing as, as John's screw chuck. Good for small, medium bowls. Um, use that a lot. Now I have, I think I own four or five chucks. So I have four or five of these lying around. If anyone wants one, I can give you one. <laughs> those and the uh, standard jaws. I have lots of those. Six. So, um, oh, the next thing are these blocks. Um, they don't look like chucks, but they are. These are jam chucks. What I have is a you mount them in my regular four jaw chuck, and these two in particular are for pepper mills. So if you're turning a pepper mill, I'm drilled for the bottom, and this one fits right in there. So you can put it on, and that it centers the uh, the mill. You don't have any marks on the inside that you have to worry about from the metal jaws. And um, the other one, I think I'm not sure what this one is. It's definitely left over from a pen pepper mill, but I'm not sure. Which one? But this is a standard. So you mount that on your chuck, goes on your headstock, tailstock runs right up into there with a 60 degree center. And then you're you got it held between you know two stable points. You can do all your shaping. Uh, works real well. So I always thought I could just use one of my chuck jaws on that, but it's not really that great um they don't it doesn't center up as nice as this so i think if you do have something like this you want to mark usually where jaw number one is so it always goes back into your chuck the same way and that way you have a better chance of it running true but you can always true it up every time you use it anyhow so um but so that's a jam chuck you can also do them for bowls of course they will be bigger um I don't have one, but here. oh, you do. Okay, let me flip over to you then. It's a jam chuck for a bowl. You can get up to I don't know, thirteen inch bowl or so out of it. It goes on with a face plate. Um, you can make them so they fit in your chucks too, but I use face plates pretty much. So I just screw this on. There's only three holes. It's I'm not really turning. All I'm doing is turning the bottom of a bowl with these things. What you do is you put this on your headstock on the face plate. You put a piece of this stuff, this um, shelf liner, I guess it's called, drawer liner, over the top like that to keep it from slipping and burning and doing funny stuff. The stuff is a little bit grippy. It works very well. And then you put your bowl over it. Like this, put your tail stock up there, and you can work on the bottom. 
Very efficient, very simple, very cheap. I got a couple different sizes. Here's a smaller one, same thing. That's it for jam chucks. Nice. I actually got one more addendum to that. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, this is another one I've used. Um, so basically it's a jam chuck, but what I've done, I've drilled and tapped a hole in the back with a well, basically a one inch, eight, one inch eight tap. So basically the threads are right in the wood and this scrolls, screws right onto my, see if I can, yeah, there we go. This will screw right onto my, my headstock and register right up against the, uh, shoot, can't do it with one hand. <laughs> There we go. So we'll register it up and be nice and straight. This is actually, uh, it looks like a um, jam chuck, but it's actually um, for my metal spinning. So, which is a sometime future demo when I get really good at it. So, uh, okay, any questions about, Gam chucks, glue blocks, um, base plates, any of those? Tom? Yep. This is Chris. Hi. Chris Miller? Yep. Uh, I have a jam chuck that I use for my uh, spoons. Oh, nice. Do you have a guy switch to you? Yep. I like to ask because I don't want just to start. Um, on people's video. <laughs> so I have a tendon on the one end and then a, a bowl of spoon shape and a cutout for the handle. And that's a coffee scoop. It goes in there and allows you to do the inside. Nice. How do you keep it in there? Uh, you use uh, a Normally, I make these the same size and do a force fit, and okay. you use a piece of uh, of cloth. Or uh, if if I miss the uh, dimension, I use the uh, uh, same material that John talked about for the uh, the the liner, and and that'll work. But that makes it a little bit uh, less secure. So I normally do. Uh, do like four or five together, and uh, it, it's a jam fit, and a piece of uh, paper towel works well. Nice. And I've also done one like this that has uh, let me see here slits in here. I like a collet. So, yes. So you you put the bowl the spoon in and jam it like that. Mm -hmm. And that works for it really well, and the price is right. That's for sure. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other comments on these things? I've got a few more. You said collar chops. If you want me to show collar chops. Uh, yeah, we can start. That's what I was going to next. So, yeah, we'll, I'll turn over to you, and you can start. All right. Um, well, actually, let me let me just show what I have real quick. Okay, okay. Let me switch to you on. So there are, I actually have two different kinds. Uh, this is a set from Penn State Industries. And they, these look like this. And these are called you know, ER25 or ER32. I'm not sure which these are. I can never remember what the names really. Those are 32. Those are 32s? Okay. Is that the dimension or is that width or something? What, what does that mean? It means that they're standard um, throughout the machinist industry. This is a carryover for metalwork. And they come standardized. 
The ER32s have a range of, um, I think it's eighth inch to five eighths or maybe three quarters. Yeah, okay. to three quarters. Uh, maybe you can get a 13 16th and there's about the biggest. The ER25 is a smaller. It goes from 1 16th up to 5 eighths. They have an ER50, which goes from about three quarters up to one and a half, I believe. So it's just a size okay. range that they go. And uh, okay, the good. sets come in, in 16th of an inch increments. You can get different sizes too, but uh, pretty much um, most sets are 16th. I have a set that goes by 32 every 30 second because they always squeeze 40,000. So there are some gaps in there. If you have a basic set like the one from Penn State or the one from Beal. Yep. So I've got a set that goes by 32 or 30 seconds of an inch so that there's no gaps. I can go from virtually one eighth inch up to uh, what the biggest one is about three nice. quarters, I think. Nice. But um, yeah, the way that these, this one works at least is you put your whatever college you want to use inside this holder and you put this collar on it um, and then that compresses it around whatever you're, you're putting in there. And like John said, you need to, you need to turn your tenon pretty um, accurately. Um, that's the one downside for a collet. The good side is it holds things really, really securely and it doesn't mark them up. So um, those are the good things. So this is this the R32 uh, set. And I also have a couple of these, which these are Morse Taper 2 collets. Um, and the way they work is they go, actually, let me my shorter. They need a draw bar. And the way they work is you put them in your headstock you bring your draw bar into the back and the draw bar actually pulls it in to the headstock and, and causes it to clamp down. So these are dead simple. Um, and this one kind of thing came from craft supplies. They sell them, uh, their machine shops sell them. But uh, they're not too expensive. They're dead simple and you can buy individual sizes. So as opposed to the chuck, which you get a whole set of sizes. But if you're just doing one particular thing, like I did a bunch of um, uh, drop spindles and I was trying to get the, the person who wanted me to make them wanted to pay something ridiculously low for them. I was trying to figure out some way to mass produce and I ended up getting three eighths inch dowels when the only way I could hold them was when, in something I call a chuck because my four jaw chucks don't, they don't close down that far. So, um, never did up selling any of them, but at least I tried. <laughs> so now we'll switch over to John. He can show what he had for collets. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, we got a fancy set. So nice. here's a set that goes by 32nd of an inch. So there are no gaps. Um, you know, with the set that, that you got there, Tom, you know, there are gaps in, in there. Like say, you gotta turn it to a specific size to fit. Here you just turn it and find the right collet that fits it. Okay. Smallest is, uh, she's 332nd is the smallest. And that's um, 18 millimeter, oh wait a minute. Yeah, three quarters the largest. And the neat thing about this, is you can use the collets. I've got one for quarter inch eight and one for one inch eight. And it takes the same collets. These are by be all. Um, I like these better because they're smooth up here. You know, the ones that um, other places sell, they have like knurling there. You catch mm -hmm. your knuckles on there one time, you're going to remember it, you know? Yep, these I did are that. Smooth. They're <laughs> a little bit safer, did you? Yeah. So these here are uh, easier on the fingers. 
But the thing is you buy one set of collets and then you can get the, the chuck for it and switch it off to lathes. It works pretty well. Hey John, what type of product project have you used those collets for? Where do I use them for? Um, well, what I've used them for in the past is like when I'm making handles for my, my tools, uh, especially like round tools, bowl gouges, spindle gouges, I'll stick it into the collet, bang the handle on there before I turn it. And this way the handle is in direct alignment with the tool itself. Um, depends on how you sharpen, but if you're sharpening a V like on a Wolverine, you find that most tools you buy, the handles are not on straight. You know, so that's why I knock off the handles and make my own. Now I'm using the screw on, you know, metal handles, but I don't do that. But that in the uh, tops, um, I've got a bunch of stuff for pens now. I'm into pen making and I'm doing some bespoke. So I'm still learning how to do that, teaching myself. But uh, you can use these things for that too. Um, if you're gonna do like little pill bottles, like you do, Jimmy, this would be great for putting it into the collet. You can drill it out and then do a reverse. I'll show you a chuck to hold the reverse of it as a closed end collet chuck. You can stick that into the hole, stick that and then turn the outside. It'd be pretty cool. But they got all kinds of uses. If you're into small stuff, these things are really neat. Um, there's another one here. This is for Morris taper. And I can use this one in the tailstock, and um, I set up a rig where I can sand pen blanks, the end of pen blanks flat. Instead of using that mill, which is pretty aggressive and pretty rough on the wood, I can put this into the tailstock, put a sanding disc in the headstock, bring the thing up, and it does a really nice job of sanding. And this set comes, this is the ER25, it's a smaller set. This one is um, one eighth is the smallest, five eighth is the biggest. But just another way to do it. You can put this in the headstock too. Um, but I got one for either way, so I can put one on each end if I need to. Nice. The other thing I was talking is these close end mandrels. These things are pretty cool. Yeah. You, do is you, you have like on your little, uh, needle cases that you make, Jimmy, you can drill a hole, stick this thing into it, and now you can put this into your collar chuck or into a drill chuck or anything that'll hold this, and you can turn the outside. So it works pretty well. And I've got uh, I've got four different ones. They all come in specific sizes. The range is pretty small. These are made for pens. So like this one here is for a cigar pen, which I don't know how big they are. I haven't used them yet, but um, one's for a gentleman, a statesman pen. The other one's for a baron pen. And I don't know what the fourth one is. I don't have a bag for it, but they work really well. The same mm -hmm. idea as a collar chuck. Being, being of Scottish heritage, I uh, instead of buying something like that, I use a piece of dowel, turn it down, and use that as a mandrel for turning the outside of the. Uh, It'll work, yeah. But this right here, this, this <laughs> part here go, goes into the hole. Yeah. And then you can tighten it up on the back yeah. here with the nut. Yeah. So it, this expands and holds it tight. Yeah. It works pretty well. That's very nice. Uh, yeah. I've been playing around, like I said, making customized pens with parts, and it, it works pretty well. Do either your or um, do you ever have a pin, pin chuck? A pin chuck? Yeah, you know where they, yeah, they put a notch on the bar and you put a pin in there, basically the force holds it? I have the uh, pin chuck, so if you guys can go over that yet, let's go that. Yeah, show, show that one. I, I don't know where it is. You have it with so you? Can I put you on the video? Sure, go ahead. Okay. There you are. All right. So, sorry, I was running up and down the stairs. So, um, <laughs> I've got the Nova G3, but on it, I have the Pen Pal um, check. So, it's pretty much just a self 
Um, let's open it up. Blank. Pretty much, you've got the two notches here, both diagonally, so it's going to self-center. You're staking. Pretty much, with these three is awesome. Just clean it up. Snug it down. And then you just, this blank will be shorter depending on what size pen you're working on, but it'll drill center wise if you put the drill chuck on your tailstock and you just run the drill right there. It's close to center on your blank. So this can go up to, I think it was two inches. So I can do bottle stoppers on it. Um, I can't do the gear shifts on it because they're just a little too big. But um, it just goes right on your plate. You just take the uh, number two and four plate off your, your chuck and you just put the two on, boom on. Pretty basic. Nice. I was going to get to that. This is quite what I meant by pin chuck, but what I was looking for is there's, it's basically it's a bar and you kind of you file a flat silk spot on it. Then you put a you little put piece a of. Um, Metal dowel, like a, a metal rod. That's yeah. That, yeah, that, that's the same thing as those closed-end mandrels. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just a different way to make them. Right, right. So, I think you get those through uh, Arizona Silhouette, if I remember. Yeah, um, that, that's where mine came they, from. Yeah, I think that's where you yeah. grab them. Um, okay. But good. Yeah. Um, okay, any questions about uh, collet chucks or um, what else we go? Oh, I had one more thing you know, I wanted to go over, and that's something which I only started seeing a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago. But these are called faceplate rings, and they're sort of like the best of both worlds. Um, that you mount them like a faceplate onto your piece of wood, but they're they have a dovetail mortise in them to catch the your um, regular jaws on your chuck. So it's sort of I use these a lot when I'm um, pouring, actually. But uh, yeah, they came with. I what they came with, but um, I have three different sizes. Actually, those two are the same chuck size. Uh, the ring size is a little bit bigger. And this goes with the bigger jaws. But they're sort of a, an alternative to face plates. But now I guess we're ready to go into the, the four jaw chucks. So basically, um, now this is, when we talk about chucks, this is basically what we're talking about. Um, this is a record power chuck. This is a, a Nova G3, like Kelly was showing, with no jaws on it. And I have regular Nova Supernova 2, which is this one. But these are all, the G3 is a little smaller size. Uh, G3 is definitely for like a midi lathe or these are for bigger lathes. So these have more weight to them. We'll take slightly bigger jaws. But, <laughs> oh my, they're uh, cutting chicken's nails downstairs. Because the chicken, all chickens, all their nails got too long over the winter. Um, this is a Penn State, uh, I think called their utility chuck. And it uses, um, bars to tighten and loosen it. So it's a two-handed operation um, to tighten and loosen this one. But uh, this one actually is, the best thing about this one, it only costs like $90. It's under $100 for this chuck. It comes with standard jaws. These are their version of whole jaws on it, which is all I use it for at this point. Um, but they're, if, if you really need to go for a bu budget set of jaws, you know, it works. But, and um, 
And these come with all kinds of different jaws. These are the standard, they're called 50 millimeter or two inch jaws. Um, they'll come with every chuck you buy. Um, this one is, is for Mercury Power, and this is an insert. Um, what that means is this will actually screw out. So it's, right now it's a one and a quarter inch insert. If I was to get a, a bigger lathe or need to move this down to my smaller lathe, I would just buy this insert for like $25, $30. I can use this chuck on my other, on my other lathe. Um, you know, Nova has their own inserts. I started changing over because, you know, that, that's the record power insert versus the Nova insert. Actually, let me get this one. These will actually show you the same. This is the same size chucks. So those are both inch and a quarter inserts. I mean, just look at the record power one, how beefy it is. So, I mean, and the nice thing about the record power and Nova is the jaws are compatible. So, Usually, if you buy a chuck, you have to stay with the same brand because most of the jaws are not compatible between the different manufacturers. You're saying Nova jaws fit on record chucks? They do. Just that you have to switch, you have to swap two and four um, because record numbers there's counterclockwise and Nova does theirs clockwise, I believe. That's good to know. Yeah. So that I see the guy told me at um, I was at the AEW symposium and the record dealer was there and they were really pushing their chucks and they're really trying to get into the US market. And so he's the one that told me about that they're compatible, you just gotta swap them. They came from um, I guess Sorby was making their Patriot Chuck, which is identical to the Nova. Um, and I think record picked up their business somehow, I'm, I'm not quite sure how it all happened. But basically, Nova, Sorby, and Record all use the same jaw sizes. But, um, but the Record Chuck, I just, it, it, it seems like they just put more thought into it. Like if you look at the, um, you know, the numbers on the Nova Chuck are stamped on the jaws where they're etched into the Record Chuck. So they're nice and, you know, if you can see that or not, they're actually etched in there, and they're just a little bit more. Just think they put a little bit more more thought into the record jaws than they did for the um, Nova. But but there's all kinds of jaws. Now these are a big set of um, big bowl jaws, or if you need to hold a spindle, they have these like the serrated. There we go. I guess rated insert if you want to hold a, a spindle there. Um, these jaws are, they're a dovetail on the, out, on the outside. So if you cut a mortise, you need to cut it to fit this dovetail here. Um, the inside does have a small dovetail right on the lip. So if you're using these for, to catch a tenon, the ten sort of has to be less than that distance in there before you hit the, the threaded size, but um, but I got um, the other nice thing is record sells this size, which is um, like an inch and a half, which is a real nice size because it uh, Nova has a hole that things just don't fit between. So, but I got all kinds of jaws. These are some long nose. What these are for, they actually, they move the work further away from the headstock. So you have like, you have more room to work. And they have a, a dovetail uh, on the top and then you have the serrated for holding a spindle down to the bottom. If you're turning something, some spindle thing long, this would hold it nice and steady for you. Um, I got this set, which is Nova's big, big bowl jaws. They're four inch, um, heavy duty. So they have the regular four inch, which are shallow, which are these. And these are their 
bull jaws, they call them. But they, you know, they sell basically every, almost every size you would want. Uh, they have these ones, which open up inside of things to grab them. They also have a one inch, I mean, a, just under three eighths, or just over three eighths, I think. But I could not time, this would not grab my three eighths spindle, unfortunately. Um, So they got these ones which are actually called pin jaws, which I'm not quite sure why. Again, they're, they have a nice dovetail outside. Uh, these are great for holding the little boxes and things like that. They'll just open up and you can put the box right over there and, and expand them and hold a little box in them. Um, they have, these, these are their other one inch jaws. Let's say they don't, they don't have the big nose on them. So they hold a little bit less if you're trying to grab a box or something. Um, so yeah, so those are the jaws I have. And if you look, this is my G3 chuck. Um, and you can see that the jaws mount on these sliders and then those, And then those sliders move in and out. To clamp whatever you're, you're turning. And the one thing you want to think about when you're actually using the, these jaws. And for some reason they use different wrenches between the Supernova and the G3. And they actually turn different directions too, which is real annoying. Um, but if you look at the way the jaws are made, they're actually cut, you know, at that point, I'm at almost a perfect circle. And you see just pieces of saw curve between the, the, um, the different jaws halves. So they machine this whole thing out of a solid piece of metal, number them and then cut them. So you always want to put them back in the order. That's why they have numbers on them. So, you know, one, two, three, four. So you always want to put them on your chuck and that's in that order so that they, um, they're, they're mo the most true. And also when you try to hold something in them, this is the point where you get the most, most, um, I don't want to say, the most contact around your tenon or around your mortise. So that's like the ideal size. If you open them up too much, then try to put something on them. In fact, let me see if I can do that with one of these. Yeah, they won't show on there. But when, when you start to open them more and more and more, you're only gonna get, there we go. Ah, it's too big. If you look, I don't know if I can show there. You see the gap in the middle of that you're only you're only contacting on the two edges so you only have you know the eight points of contact where the closer you get to a, a full circle you have more contact you have the more secure hold and um and so you always want to make your your tenon or your mortise close to the size of the jaws when they're almost closed completely so, and now the other thing you always want to look at is the shape of your jaws. Because um, you want to match your, your tenon or your mortise to that shape. So the, on a Nova jaw, the outside is a dovetail on, on this standard jaw. But the inside is actually a straight wall with a little, we call it a bird's beak on it. So it's not quite a dovetail. So you want to make your um, your tenon basically straight walled, with maybe a little bit of a a flare where this is where the that bird beak is going to dig in. But um, 
So that's different from other jaws they sell, which, um, you know, like this one is, is a dovetail on both ends. So you can see, but so this one you want to match, make your tenon with a dovetail to match that angle. And I think it's 15 degrees, but I'm not positive of that. It's around there. And the outside mortise to match that dovetail. So you get a good hold. Uh, now the G3 is nice because it's open backed. It's basically I blow it out with a compressed air and I'm done. Um, if you need the uh, Novas are closed backed. So if you, if something happens and you need to take them apart, like for instance, let's say somebody dumped finish on theirs. Um, just, just for instance, not that I would do that. But what you have to do is there's a, a snap ring here. And so you have to get a pair of snap ring pliers or, or fight off that snap ring. And this whole bank blank comes off the whole back. And then basically those sliders come out. You know, the, these sliders all slip out. So you want to basically mark them so you get them back in the same position. And you know, the gears, all this will just fall right out, this gear ring. And everything, and you can clean them up, lubricate them, um, you know, get the finish off of them, and then they work pretty well after that. So, but um, they're really nice. Aren't they? I don't know. Does anyone have the quick change ones? No, that that's been a new. Um, I've got the uh, Easy Wood quick change ones. Okay, what do you think of those? I, I love it. I got it on my uh, Laguna, and anytime I want to change it, it's just a little, uh, it comes with a, a little wrench, and you just push it in the hole, they pop right off. You put your new ones in, they clip in. Nice. I know they're having, um, last year at some point, they were having YouTube races showing how fast people could change their easy wood jaws. I think Carl Jacobson got it down to like 32 seconds or something. Um, so, I mean, it is nice. Um, the only trouble is that it is really expensive. Um, basically, it's because basically the jaws are more, a little bit more expensive and the chuck itself is about twice as expensive. So, I already had my, my Nova. So, for me, I, the Nova jaws, Nova has their own system, quick change system, but it's not compatible with these jaws. So you have to get by um, an aftermarket modification, change your jaws so they fit the quick change. And it was just cheaper actually to buy a new jaw, new chuck, than to um, you know refit all my jaws and all my chucks to the quick change. But that is an option if you're just starting, getting started with your, your chuck. Um, Let's go that way. But uh, any questions on on these guys? Anything I've, you want to see? I've got a variation. If you want to uh, give me control, I can show a variation of something I've done for boxes and spoons. Sure. Uh, you got it. So these are wooden jaws. So you can make your own wooden jaws and have them make sure that the, the drill holes are, you know, exactly line up for your particular chuck. But once you have them, then you can, you can plow out your own recess in the inside and use it for whatever pieces, you know, whatever size pieces you're making. So I made these, I don't know, a year ago or so. Um, and I made them for box tops to get the tops finished and to get the insides of the tops finished. Um, so, it, it, the options are sort of endless. I mean, whatever, if you can make it out of wood and you can fasten it to your jaw, your chuck, then you have a lot of opportunities to, to, uh, to manipulate the wood to do whatever it is you need. So these can now open and close on the chuck to fit whatever it is that you're, um, you're trying to turn. So the one that I have for spoons actually has a recess that I've plowed out somewhere in, I don't know, I don't know where the void is, but somewhere in, 
in the wood, I've made a recess to hold the, the spoon's handle, but it, it makes a nice closable, you know, clenchable uh, grip for the, the spoon body. So I don't know, people, um, there's, there's uh, I found it online, but there's a, a way to make a, um, a jig to allow you to reproduce the drills, the drill holes so that you can reproduce these and make them, I'm, I've probably got, I don't know, a dozen of these downstairs. Um, reproducible so that you can you can use them for whatever purpose you need. Nice. So that's it. I know Nova sells um, some plastic jaws for basically that purpose also. Yeah, but that's a lot cheaper. Those. Tom, it's Jim here. I stepped away for a minute or two, uh, and, and so I don't know if you discussed the uh, one-way stronghold, Chuck, at all. No, I can give you control, and you can. Um, go for it. I started out with, with the, with the big one way lathe and I bought the one way chuck and I thought it was a pretty good chuck. And so I've ended up over the years buying three different chucks. But one of the biggest problems with the one way is there's a gap between, uh, of about half an inch in the two, two and three quarter, three inch range. I forget exactly what the number is between the number two jar and the number three jar there's a serious gap and you just can't chuck it. And I was complaining about that to uh, Ron Marcou. And uh, you know Ron, he's a great machinist. And uh, I ended up catching in the mail just last week a set of jaws that he made, they're a little soft aluminum. They fit perfectly on my one-way chuck. Now I just have to go in here and cut a dovetail, so I'll have either either on exterior or interior, and I'll have a beautiful set of, of uh, dovetail jaws that uh, made for the one-way chuck, and they have a great range in the three to or about two and three quarter to three and a half or even greater range. Uh, I've made uh, a series of handmade wooden, wooden uh, I say wooden, but actually they're made with uh, High density MDF, similar to what uh, Bruce has. Uh, oh, I made them years ago uh, using a, a uh, jaws from a one way jaws that they have a set of flat jaws, and I use the flat jaws as a template for drilling my holes. And uh, it works great for all kinds of oddball shapes that you want to make extra deep jaws. Uh, I can stack the MDF into three, four inch high and make some very deep jaws. Or it's amazing what you can do if you just don't don't get hung up on the fact that they're not available in the catalog. Just make them yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, do you know you got the one way? I think one way and Axman or Big Mark are like the two Cadillac brands. Is that? If I were to start all over again, I would go to Vicmark rather than one uh, the one way. Because mm. I have the one way, I'm kind of stuck with it. But the Vicmark, from everything I've read on all the reviews I've seen and listening to some of the professional turners out there, the, the Vicmark is the premium. Hey, Tom, I got that Vicmark here. If you want to give me control, I can show it. OK, who who's talking? Elliot. That's Elliot, okay. Elliot, OK. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, well, you know, I didn't know anything about chucks. Um, uh, I knew a little more about turning than I did chucks. But the only reason I have the Vic Mark is I learned how to do bowl turning at North Penn Street School, and that's all they use. So I have this. Um, Vic Mark 120. I know there's a Vic Mark 150 as well, which is I think just bigger. Um, I, there might be a smaller than the, the Vic Mark 120, but here's the uh, Vic Mark 120. What I really like about it, uh, a couple of things. One, it has these dovetail jaws here, which um, when you start with one of these, at least the way I learned, you take your bowl blank and um, uh, you drill a hole in the and the part that actually gets hollowed out, as you were talking before. And that uh, the screw comes with a screw that fits in here and closes, closes in on that. And then you screw your ball blank 
um, into that actually this way. Um, and then when you strip it, then you have to move to a faceplate. Now I've learned everything by mistake. So, um, uh, and then you turn, you know, you turn the, uh, turn the outside of, of the bowl and, and, and towards the bottom. And then um, the way I learned was to, to cut a mortise in here, use a skew chisel to, to get that dovetail edge. And then you just, um, that fits right over the Vic mark um, like this. And uh, it's like two turn. Another great thing about this is the Allen wrench it comes with. Uh, it's like two turns. I mean, the gearing's really tight. It's like two turns and the thing, the bolt is tight onto here. Let's see. Yeah, so that's not going anywhere. And then you, you hollow out the inside of the bowl. So um, something's really nice about this. It comes with a, a breaking bar that you use to, to get it off of the lathe if it's too tight. And it just, uh, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice chuck. It's pretty heavy. I, um, I used it a lot on um, a MIDI lathe. So I have a, uh, a one eight insert for that. And then I use it a lot on a, uh, I think a, probably the same um, lathe you have, Jim, the, uh, the Powermatic. Um, I use it at Allen's uh, uh, Homestead School. And uh, um, it's the same one they use at North Bennett Street School. So a um, couple inserts, not that expenses, as you said, I think about, about 30, 25 bucks, 25, 30 bucks for the inserts, depending on what flow you have. And it's pretty nice. I like it. So that's um, what so I learned on, so that's what I use. Uh, Elliot, one of the noted benefits of Vicmark over the one-way chuck, even though they're supposed to be premiums, the, uh, the, the X drive on that Vicmark is a better drive than the uh, gear on the T-bar that comes with the uh, one-way. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Wonder. Yeah, so if you're Hit the lottery, go for the big marks. Uh, it's hard once you get, you know, when, once you start buying a chuck, because you buy all the jaws and you're really, really sort of tied in at that point, unless you really want to spend a lot more money. So, but, um, but yeah, I agree. The, the big marks are the way to go if you're starting out and you, and a uh, budget's not an issue. That's but, uh, the Novas are nice, you know, middle of the road. They, they work very well. I haven't had any problem with them, but um, you know, and the, the price is right on them, so which is good. The Penn States are a little bit, um, they're really less expensive and they, they don't, I don't think they hold as well. So that's my, my experience with them. I started the Barracuda too on, um, from PSI when I started turning and um, it worked okay, but I had a couple things fly across the shop, so. Well, I think you'll find that using the uh, homemade jaws like Bruce showed in his picture, uh, any variation on that is a great way to go. Mm, that's true. It's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have for a, for a chuck, uh, Bill, Bruce? Um, I have both the Nova and the One Way. Okay. What's your opinion of the One Way? I like it. I mean, that was a recent purchase for me. Well, recent within the last year. Um, I had the Novas before. I, I don't. I don't care for them as much. I use them much like you use the one that you have dedicated to your um, your cold jaws. Sort of. They just kind of sit there waiting for a big piece to to be mounted. Um, and primarily, everything's with the one way now. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Any questions about the four jaw chucks? Oh, I'm actually, I didn't want my cold jaw. That's what I wanted to show. So, yeah, the one thing I do have for mine, um, I got the, the super big cold jaws. These are, these will basically bear, just will, they'll fit the full diameter of my 16 inch lathe. But these, basically, they're the, um, they're the regular. Uh, I forget what size these are, 12 inch plus an extension to get them like to 14 and they open up to about 16. So. You replace those, um, the, the rubber pieces there? 
Yeah, these searching. actually come. Those are from Nova. They're, yeah. they're yeah, they're they're they they grip really nice. I like those much better than the round ones. So so the round ones uh, that those are the ones that I have on the Nova. Wait, are those uh, new? Uh, they are. Well, I got these about three years ago. Hmm. Interesting. So, but yeah, if you if you search for them, they have them. Um, I got them from Amazon, so that's they were easy to find. Well, anybody who's using the round ones, I mean, they're 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 dangerous. I mean, they they're not very good. Those yeah, they have they're thrown in one of my drawers here. Uh, I don't even know where they are anymore. Yeah, because I put these on, I never take them off. Yeah, so grip those, you know, they they have both. They have um, they have a concave and a convex radius. You know, a sharp one and a less sharp one. So you have four different choices on on how you want them to spin. This if you're catching the inside of a bowl, you have you know this side or this side. The outside of the bowl, you use this side or this side. So, but that sort of moves us to our our next um, topic is the big boys. So we have um, the special chucks, the Longworth donut chuck, the the cold jaws, and I'm then I have um, looking at the vacuum chuck. Did anyone have any more questions about standard four jaw chucks? Okay. So we we'll want to the others. Uh, John, you said you had a long worth and a donut to show? I do. Okay, let me take, switch over I'm to you. Getting it found right now. Okay. And Jim, did you have an in the show for long worth? Yeah, I sent you pictures of uh, the ones that I have up on the wall, but I also have in my, in my office here, I brought up uh, a long worth that I made back probably 15 or more years ago, and the Donut Chuck. Uh, okay. A ma magazine article that I, I made it for. Oh, cool. So switch over to you after John then. So John has a fancy one. Huh? It's the store-bought version. This thing's a monster. It's, um, it's sized for a 20-inch lathe. I think the smallest is a 12-inch lathe. I think they go up to 24-inch lathe. But this thing's a monster. The way that it's held on is uh, four inch jaws for a uh, scroll chuck. It's got a, it's not really a dovetail, I guess it's just got a little notch underneath there. You can see that. They also have, a, I think it's a two and a half inch piece like this for the smaller chucks. But for one this big, you need the, the big one. And it snaps on. It comes with 16 buttons. Sorry about that light. Let me turn this thing a little bit. Hold on. No better. Um, this one, I only got eight buttons on it. I haven't had a need for 16 buttons. I guess if I use it to its full, you know, 17 or 18 inch bowl, I would put on eight more of these to hold it. But I tell you, this thing is really... It really holds well. It really holds really well. These buttons are pretty soft. They squish on there. It's not going to come off. And how you use it is you put your bowl in the middle here. And oh. okay, here we go. Put your bowl in the middle, and then you rotate this thing. I can't do it because <laughs> I can't hold the darn thing and. Uh, and rotate it. Wait a minute. There we go. See, it gets bigger. And now it's. Well, this is a terrible demo. I can't do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got to mount it in a truck to hold it. It's just too big and long. But these things just go in, in these grooves and they get bigger and smaller. What you do is you bring it down till it touches all eight things. Then you lock it in. You got to turn each one of these in the back and tighten it up. It's kind of a lot of manual, but I tell you, it's super strong, tenacious grip. It worked really well. Hmm. They are expensive. Um, this thing is, uh, 
uh, well, phenolic resin, I think it's made of. It's uh, bulletproof. So. But it works good. One Very thing nice. is, um, can you read that? Do not exceed 600 RPMs. Um, I've had this thing up to, I don't know, fast, a whole lot faster than 600. No problem. So. It sounds like an airplane propeller though. It blows a lot of air. The air gets trapped in all these little grooves. So it does sound <laughs> like an airplane propeller. Hmm. Makes it exciting. Oh, I bet. <laughs> But I like it, it works very well. There we oh. go. No, I just had it working, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's too big an ornery, it's gotta be mounted for it to be able to slide good. Okay. Let's switch over to Jim and he can show his, and we'll go over to the donut chucks. Well, I okay. came across an article in the More Wood Training Magazine back in May of 2005. It was a three page article on how to make your own Longworth. Being Scottish, I couldn't resist. Besides at the time, I didn't want to put the money into uh, going out anything or any commercially available at that time. Back 15 years ago, you couldn't find anything except a homemade one. Uh, and so I made a couple of them, some big ones and some small ones. This one here I made to fit on the back of my shop smith, which is a uh, 5 8 round uh, with a set screw hold uh, on, the, uh, on the spindle drive. But this thing here was uh, a couple of three, uh, a piece of MCF, a piece of plywood clamped together, drilled on it with a, uh, a simple router. And uh, right now I have some. Uh, crutcher tip jaws on it, but I've also had it with three inch long uh, rods covered with uh, uh, just drill rod, not drill rod, but threaded rod covered with uh, Tyvek to handle some pretty tall uh, stuff that, I, that these things wouldn't catch. Uh, it's uh, pretty versatile and very cheap. As I said in my email, the instructions for making the it's really quite simple. Uh, right, in that magazine, the note magazine will be digitized and made available uh, around the end of April because the Dennis Dodlin, who took over from Fred Holder, the publisher of More Wood Train, is going out of business and he's putting all of his stuff up uh, for uh, all of his previous issues from serial number one all the way up to. 250 or 260 issues of more wood turning will be made available uh, to anybody who, who wants them. Uh, a book that might be of interest, and I don't know if it's easily available, it's, it was published by uh, Great Britain uh, Guild of Master uh, Craftsmen Publications, is Fred Holder's How to Hold uh, Work on the Lathe, and it has everything that we've already discussed uh, along with vacuum chucks and how to make your own vacuum chucking system. That's the next topic. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, an evaluation of the different types of chucks. Uh, uh, this was published a few years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, back uh, around 2000 and yeah, 2004, just a year before this magazine, this magazine article came out, but it included the Longworth Chuck in it. But uh, it has a lot of information for anybody who wants to go out and get it. A, a guide to holding, to a guide to work holding on the lathe by Fred Holder. Great article. Um, yeah, the uh, Longworth Chucks are, uh, are very simple. It saves an awful lot of work. Uh, one of the biggest problems with the cold jaws is the amount of, of screwing and unscrewing that you have to do to, uh, to get a good fit on the cold jaws. Uh, this is just one ring that you, you spin to get, to get what you want. And uh, it, it, it is an awful lot easier. That's, so that's good. good on the, uh, the long wrist. 
you have your dodo check there? We'll hit those. Or try to just go back to jog. Um, I'm trying to get a pot. Of, uh, <laughs> I brought up a donut chuck out of the shop. Uh, that's, that's, an, yeah, that's your next subject, right? A donut chuck? Yep, yep, donut chucks. Yeah, I, I, uh, been on the shelf for so long, I, uh, I can't unscrew it to uh, pull the pot. But, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, this one here is one that uh, any size length of screw that you want to put in it, depending on the, the thickness that you want to grab in the donut, uh, you can clamp some things that uh, you otherwise wouldn't be able to hold on a chuck. So particularly if it's in the bottom. Uh, Elliot, uh, one of the things that they probably taught you at, uh, at, at Venice Street was how to turn a bowl, but recent, uh, uh, craftsmen want to want to hide how they hold it. They, they want to make the uh, the holding method disappear in the final finish. <laughs> and, uh, so this is what you'd need: something like this, or the cold jaws, or the uh, long rest to uh, get rid of that tendon. Well, they also teach you that um, first thing bowl turners look for when they pick up a bowl is they they turn it to the bottom to see how it was it was held. So. Right. And so if you make that disappear, then it adds, uh, adds interest to the product. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll switch to John and see his gun and chuck. We'll move to vacuum. Oop. Okay, you're up, John. I'm up for what? I bolt a donut chuck. Oh, I don't have a donut. I don't have a donut. No. Oh, okay. Okay, then we're, we're all set then on that. So we're back to, um, where am I? Here we are. Okay, so next topic, final topic, as everybody rejoices. Oh, by the way, this is the, um, the book I had, got my, a lot of my information from, uh, Fixtures and Chucks by Doc Green. I think I actually won this from, um, from more War Turning Magazine. They had a raffle when I was a new subscriber, so, but. Pretty good book. So now vacuum chucks. The vacuum chuck consists of this thing, which is the um, goes through your headstock, and uh, this is basically a bearing, so that the you know the um, vacuum hose doesn't get twisted up. It rides on that bearing, and then. This little nut here actually holds it onto the, the front of your headstock. And then, actually, you can actually fasten this up. So we'll look at it a little bit. So basically, this goes through. It goes in, this has a rubber seal on it. And then you can pick. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed on the uh, slideshow I was putting, I had two of Jim's, a, Jim, a picture of Jim's uh, homemade ones by PVC. These are uh, made by, um, makes this one. Hmm. Hold fast. So anyhow, so you pick the, the chuck based on the size of your bowl. Now most of mine get this one. So then this screws right on. And then I don't have a natural vacuum chuck. I have, it's called a Venturi, um, which this runs off your air compressor. So what I end up doing is hook it up to my air compressor Hook the um, part that's in the lathe on, and then you can turn it on. Um, that's pulling vacuum there now. I don't know if this is so. 
Uh, this is rough on the inside, so it's not going to hold too well. But um, yeah, and it holds it, and it holds it there well enough that you can um, you can take your tenon off. I I always use mine with the shell stock brought up anyhow, so that always helps. Um, and there's one other uh, part to this, which is. This and so I have this little doohickey. And what this is, this lets you take your chuck. So you take your bowl. Um, So you, you take your bowl and chuck off the headstock. Oh, but there goes my air compressor. Um, and this. Goes right into the chuck. And then it goes to your tail stock. Now you can center the bowl right, right up on the, um, on the vacuum chuck. So now you take the chuck off. You're centered up. So and since I've this is a nice economical system. The uh, Venturi, I think this whole system was about um, three hundred dollars total. The Venturi system, and you can always add a real vacuum pump later on if you, you know that's what. You want to do, but the uh, vacuum pumps themselves are rather expensive. So, how many inches of vacuum does it draw? This, I'll say with this bowl, it's hard to say, but I usually get up to about, um, about 18 or 20 on the scale. How large is your compressor, Tom? It's a 21 gallon, it's not real big. So, how many horsepower do you know? Is it, is it one? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Is it one ten or do you two twenty? It's one ten. It's one ten. It's not two twenty. Okay. So it's it's, a, it's an old Craftsman. Yeah. So it's not a. It's not not a real high quality. Um, but it, if it if something's actually mounted, <clears throat> if I have the bolt finished, so it's smooth inside, and there are no holes. So that you that's a that's a real surprise. Put your bowl mm -hmm. up and doesn't hold because there's a wormhole in it. Um, you know, I could easily take the tenon off. It doesn't. I've never lost a bowl off the vacuum. Yeah. Um, but I say I always. I do bring out my tail stock, and make sure that that that's holding. So. Hey Tom. Um, yep. You uh, you're talking about a three hundred dollar investment. Uh, you said you had slides of the stuff I sent you a few days ago. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna put that up. Shop made. Uh, really inexpensive Home Depot uh, plumbing fixtures, pipe, pipe joints, etc. Uh, my pump that I use is one that I paid, uh, I think 50 or $53, including shipping uh, from eBay or Amazon, I forget which. It was a number of years ago, it was a recommendation from Peter James, who's uh, in the uh, Grand State Woodturners. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he sourced a bunch of these and uh, Yep, there it is. If I make that bigger. You made all those, Jim? Yeah, those are all various sizes. Uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know why, but I'm losing my picture all of a sudden. Um, uh, yeah, they're uh, just pieces of PV PVC pipe, uh, window uh, uh, insulation, uh, some uh, uh, Gorilla Glue, I think is what I started using originally, Gorilla Glue, uh, just turn a groove in a block of wood, 
you'll see that in the, in the foreground, I've got some hex nuts that I got from McMaster car that fit my headstock. Uh, some of them are uh, face plates that I didn't use for anything else, but I just mounted a, a chunk of MDF to them, turned them round, turned a groove in it to fit the size of the pipe I was using. Uh, used gorilla, gorilla glue to, to throw the, uh, 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 the, the pipe into it, turn the face of the pipe and glue some uh, window insulation, window foam around the top and they work real good. In the, in the foreground, you'll see my rotary connection. It's just a piece of threaded rod that goes up to the, uh, the, the spindle, goes through the spindle, and a couple of bearings in the back end, again with pipe fittings glued together to, it's, it, it's a cheap way out, but it, it works. I get 26 inches, uh, 25 to 26 inches, and that will take almost <laughs> anything you can imagine for, uh, yeah. What kind of pump do you have? I'm not too sure what the size was. It was an old, uh, it was a converted uh, medical pump. Uh, and I, I've had it for a number of years. I, bought, I started out with one that I got from Harbor Freight and it sprayed so much uh, <laughs> oil in my oil. shop. Yeah. It was raining, it was a cloud. <laughs> I got rid of that real quick. In fact, I think I sold it to one of the guys in the, in the group. <laughs> about that my apologies <laughs> but uh it wasn't a very, it wasn't very expensive and i didn't sell it for much but as I, said, I paid about 50 bucks for the uh the, the one online and uh, it works great hey jim is the gorilla glue enough to give you the airtight seal or did you have to do something else yeah the gorilla glue uh worked, worked pretty good you can see it in the one over on the uh uh, at three o'clock, I spread it, you know, with my finger as it was drying. The others, I just kind of let it as it go. But uh, I think the one in the at the in the center, the small one in the center, I think I used epoxy, uh, West System epoxy for that, and for the big one in the back, the, the West System epoxy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I switched for most of them. I think I switched over from Gorilla Glue to West System, but. Uh, yeah, they work. Cool. Very good. What, uh, Jim, one other question. What did you use to fasten the um, weather stripping? Same thing? Oh, it's, it's self-adhesive weather stripping. That from, was enough. From Home Depot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments, stories, lies? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it all lies? <laughs> isn't, that what, isn't that what wood turners do? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> to point out the vacuum pumps, you can get them, um, uh, I think, a Robin Air, which is a two stage pump. I think they're $99 on Amazon. Mine oh, really? was um, $65 through that Cohen uh, BAC. Um, I got the whole stabilizing um, system through uh, BAC, and um, mm -hmm. they have various different uh, size pumps from one stage, single stage, what I have now. Uh, I might go with a two stage, but so far the single stage has been running pretty hard and surviving. Oh, good. Hey, Kel, how many inches does that one drop, the one you're using for your, your stabilizer? 29? Yeah, that's, that's near perfect. Yeah. Um, I did get 30 once, but it's been right around 29. 29, you're not going to get better than that. That's good. No, not with this, not with the uh, single stage twice. Was it like 32 the most you could ever get? 30. Um, 30. 30, yeah. 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 But, yeah, I just pulled out some, some Dyed pieces now. I'm just checking the uh, color right now. Cool. But what are we going to do for next month's um, meeting? Are we going to do the same thing if we're not back? To the store? I, I'm assuming it's going to be the same thing. Um, it'll either be, um, I think Brett Fullerton was, was signed up. 
to do the demo, but he's not signed in today. So I'll talk to him. So it'll be him, it'll be either be, or me coming up with something new, or hopefully uh, we took a vote and uh, we were authorized to get a off-site remote demonstrator, someone like a Mike Mahoney or Cindy Drozda. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can, I can swing that because they've been emailing all the AAW people saying that they're offering the remote demos for two to $300. So it'll be one of those options for next month. Okay. So, okay. Any other questions, comments? Hey Tom, put me on, put me on. I want to show Kelly something here I made today. No, oh, you're on. Oh, let me spotlight you. There you go. Wow. Oh, the nice deer with the antler? With the deer <laughs> antler, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. all stinks. I'm not gonna do it again. It's the second one I made. It's, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again. But it came out <laughs> nice. It's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it just stinks too bad. Wait till you try the buffalo horn. It's the same thing. Um, maybe I won't try it then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you wanted to know the um, size of cigar pens? I've got a few done. Let me uh, dig them out of my bag. Yeah, I've got the kits and I've got the mandals. I just haven't got to them yet. I'm on, so, uh, yeah, I'm on number 27 now, so I still got a way to go before I use up all my kits. <laughs> this is, yeah. I'll get to it. This is the uh, cigar, Big Ben, um, Cuban, depending on where you're buying it. So, this one's out of curling maple. Uh, let me see if I, I got a couple of them kits, yeah. This one came out pretty big. I think this is a premium cigar kit. The premiums were bigger. Um, uh -huh. Size wise, I mean, the, the hardware's the same, but for some reason, the uh, I don't know, this one just came out bigger. Yeah, it's nice. But, yeah, it's all right. That's for arthritic hands. Works <laughs> good. Yeah, they are heavy. They are, but they're yeah. not as heavy as those roller balls. The um, skeleton of the dragons. Those are. Oh yeah, those are. They have yeah. the metal on them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not so much the metal, it's the size of the pen, especially the shotgun pen, um, the over under shotgun with the, the cap. Um, I think mine's down. It's just, hold on, dang girl. Got it. I might not have it down here. No, it's upstairs in my purse. I was using it the other day. But they're just a big, beefy pen. I mean, size wise, I think they're the brass in them is huge. Uh, I don't actually remember. Okay, let's let me sign off and I'll keep the I'll keep the meeting running. If anyone wants to show off stuff or I think that we'll keep it running for a little bit longer. But uh so let me do a final sign off and so um hopefully this worked out for you guys. Yeah, that's pretty um, good. We're yeah. fine. Yeah, nice nice <laughs> job, Tom. Nice but, job. Uh, so yeah. Thanks a lot. And um if you want to stick around, I'll keep the meeting running for a while. You can I'll put it on um so your voice will bring the focus to you. You want to show off stuff or show people things? Go for it. So sure. thanks a lot. I'll let, I'll keep you in touch. Let you know what's happening next month. Awesome. So, Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank Good you, John. Good night. Good night.